Well, good evening and welcome again to our midweek unraveled worship. Uh, we are focusing on Pharaoh and Moses, and we'll actually get to sing the lovely old time hymn, uh, Go Down Moses, as it's commonly known. So I look forward to that this evening. Um, we'll be looking at a story from Exodus, and uh, we'll discuss that as we get there, and we'll see what new things might come to light this evening. We're glad to have you back, and uh, after a short second, we'll prepare our hearts and our minds for worship this evening. Listen, I have a story to tell, a story of a God who longed for justice, a story of a God who pushed back the waters to make dry land. A story of a God who would not take no for an answer when it came to the safety of God's own. For God's people were suffering. God's people were crying out. God's people were shackled and bound by oppression. So God said to Moses, Speak, let my people go. And Moses spoke over and over again. Moses stood up for justice, but over and over again, Pharaoh said no. Power said no. The path to justice is never easy, is it? The path to change is never a straight line, is it? So like Rosa, who sat on the bus, and Martin, who had a dream, Moses kept trying. God kept speaking, Moses kept listening, hope kept breathing, and when power tried to unravel justice, the people kept dreaming. God longed for justice, and God still longs for justice. So let us worship God, for human injustice will never be strong enough to unravel God's dream that all might be free. And all might know love. Let us worship holy God. We join in singing our hymn this evening, Go Down Moses, or also known when Israel was in Egypt's land. <laughs>
continue with our prayer of confession. God, you have asked us to be like Moses, standing up for your people, standing up for justice. But too, but too often, often we, are we are like Pharaoh, holding on to power or holding on to privilege. God, you ask us to be like Aaron, who stood by his brother to unravel systems of oppression. But too often we align with Pharaoh, saying no to change and unraveling your vision for justice and peace. Forgive us all the ways we stand on the wrong side of history. Forgive us for the harm we do to your planet and for the harm we do to your children. Help us to be like Moses. Forgive us when we're like Pharaoh. Amen. Our scripture reading this evening is from Exodus, the fifth and seventh chapters. Afterwards, Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, let my people go, so that they may celebrate a festival to me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should heed him and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when Pharaoh says to you, perform a wonder, then you shall say to Aaron, take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh, and it will become a snake. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did as the Lord had commanded. Aaron threw down his staff before Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. Then Pharaoh summoned the wise men and the sorcerers, and they also, the magicians of Egypt, did the same by their secret arts. Each one threw down their staves, and they became snakes, but Aaron's staff swallowed up theirs. Still Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he is going out to the water Stand by at the riverbank to meet him, and take in your hand the staff that was turned into a snake. Say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, sent me to say, Let my people go, so that they may worship me in the wilderness. But until now you have not listened. Thus says the Lord, By this you shall know that I am the Lord. See, with the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water that is in the Nile, and it shall be turned to blood. The fish in the river shall die, the river itself shall stink, and the Egyptians shall be unable to drink water from the Nile. The Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your staff, stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over its rivers, its canals, and its ponds, and all its pools of water, so that they may become blood, and there shall be blood throughout the whole land of Egypt, even in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded. In the sight of Pharaoh and of his officials, he lifted up the staff, struck the water in the river, and all the water in the river was turned into blood. And the fish in the river died. The river stank so that the Egyptians could not drink its water, and there was blood throughout the whole land of Egypt. But the magicians of Egypt did the same by their secret arts. So Pharaoh's heart remained hardened, and he would not listen to them as the Lord had said. Pharaoh turned and went into his house, and he did not even, he did not take even this to heart. <clears throat> We've reflected on this text a number of times in our podcast and now in worship. The artwork that is featured for this piece is called Anti-Creation Narrative, and it's a, a piece done by Lauren Wright Pittman, and we want to give certainly note her, give her credit for this piece. It's a piece that features Pharaoh in the center with concentric circles behind his head of each of the plagues, yet dividing the picture is the Red Sea. 
that we know will eventually lead to the freedom of God's people uh, as Moses and Aaron lead God's people out to the land of Egypt. You know, and we, we, we've heard this text now so many different times. I continue to be baffled um, by, 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 Her by, by Herod. <laughs> Wrong generation. By Herod. By Herod. <laughs> uh, but by, by Pharaoh. And this incredible, instead of listening to what Moses and Aaron are preaching, Pharaoh immediately goes to disprove what they're doing. He's not hearing the message. He's looking at the moment. He's looking at the, 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 the science experiment that's happening in front of him. You know, the, the staff into a snake, the water into blood. He's more in tune with trying to disprove them or do it on his own than he is to hear the message. And I know we'd have to back up a little bit and know that God you know, is a part of this hardening of heart, and there's an interesting comment and commentary to be had on that, for sure. But I still am struck by how quick, at least the text makes it seem, that Pharaoh is not willing to engage what Moses and Aaron are saying, mm -hmm. but instead goes right to well, my guys can do that too. Watch, they can they can make this happen. Check it out. Watch, and and the text even has to remind us that you know Aaron's staff turned into a snake, theirs turned into a snake, and then Aaron's staff ate the other snakes. You know, it's like my snake's better than my yours. snake's better than yours, right? Right. So I, I wonder, I wonder too, what that means for the text and what that means for for Pharaoh. Why he's so quick and need. Even to engage the conversation, whether he agreed or not, whether he believed or not, you know, how would things have been different? And he said, you know what, I'm, I'll at least hear you out. And I think about everything going on right now, and we got some voices saying this and some voices saying that, and regardless of uh, who that voice is or what we think about any of the voices. And in the one-on-one -on -one conversations, I, I often hear, well, it's this, well, it's that, well, let's just, let's just have the conversation. Whether you agree, whether you disagree, whether you think it's real news, fake news, wh whatever, let's just talk. Let's hear each other out. And I wonder if Pharaoh, like I witnessed so many people today, it's not that their hearts are hardening, but before we even enter the conversation, there's already a wall there. That, that, that stone is set. Let's chisel that away and just listen. And if we come away with, you know what, this is good and this is bad, or I disagree, whatever. But at least we had the conversation. And I think that helps to prepare the heart uh, the old hymn, Lord, make our, let our heart be good soil. You've got to have that conversation. You've got to till at it. You've got to work it. Um, and one would think, too, that Moses would be the, and I think Moses is the one who can have that conversation because he's a child of the court. He, he knows he's been there. He, he most likely knows who he's talking to. Uh, and who he's talking to knows him. And all the people of the court would remember him as this prince of Egypt. They would remember him in that kind of capacity. And yet, still, he is not given the space to speak. So it has nothing to do with, well, I mean, there's a, there is a story in the middle of you know, Moses killing somebody. So there's, there's a good reason that other people might be scared of him or like, you know, maybe he's skeptical. skeptical, off his rocker, those kind of things. But at the same time, Moses is still someone who is seen as a fairly powerful figure. If not, Pharaoh would not have done what he did, seeking out Moses and God's people, as we know the story comes to an end. But I think you're right. I think there's an interesting commentary being had here about what it means to sit in the unpleasant nature of maybe conflict or of conversation that doesn't always mean you're right. And what does it mean to be that as Christians? who are holding to this gospel message of we're going to encounter people who believe differently than us, who sing differently than us, who, who speak, who look, who act, who live. And what does it mean to live in that moment, to 
dwell in that heart in order, as you're saying, Paul, to till out what's so hard and learn to coexist or learn to love each other or whatever the, the goal might happen to be. And I think, too, as Lauren and her and her reflection on this particular art piece talks about is that that's what's at the center, at least as my understanding, of why things are unraveling. We're not willing to go there. We're not willing to see the other because they are other. Instead of saying, you are a child of God, let's live into this discomfort. Let's name it, claim it, and then suffer. And in that too, you know, you often have two sides of different stories, different viewpoints, things like that. I wonder, it just kind of struck me that these waters are parted and that wave forward true dry path is in the middle of those. It's not on the right side, it's not on the left side, it's not, you know, this, this water's higher than that side, it's, oh, somewhere in the middle of both of those, when we separate them out, there's the path, which requires both, you know, both sides to, to move, to give, to sacrifice, before you can move forward into that promised land, into freedom, into that um, security. So, interesting tidbit there. It is, it is. I'd invite others too to, to wrestle with the realities of what does it mean to live into that, that separatedness yet separate out of necessity to find the center path. What does that mean? I invite you, if you've got your ELW hymnal close by to you, uh, which you both have to grab ours as well, if you'll turn with us to hymn 543, Go My Children With My Blessing, we would love to have you join us in song. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, your Son was taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us in our prayers for all the world and in the end, bring everything into your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thank Thanks be to God.